Hi, I'm Steven. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, National Signing Day at UCF. We get a behind-the-scenes look at what happens when UCF's newest players send in their commitments. Plus, head coach George O'Leary stops by to talk about the spring. All that and plenty more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for stopping by. National Signing Day was this week here at UCF, and we'll get a behind-the-scenes look at that in just a moment. But first, basketball continues to roll here on campus, and the week started with the men's basketball team taking on the Houston Cougars in a whiteout at UCF Arena. Let's take a look at what happened. The Knights took on Houston in the first event of the week. This night would turn out to be a rough one for UCF, as the Cougars were blazing hot from the field all night. Jermaine Taylor had the highlight of the night with this dunk here. He finished with 26 points. Also, Tony Davis had 20 and 13 rebounds, but it would not be enough as UCF fell to Houston at the arena. The following night, the women's basketball team took the floor against Tulsa, and drama was the name of the game here. UCF fought back from a five-point halftime deficit by shooting 54% from the field in the second half. Emma Cannon and Amber Kirkpatrick had 15 points each, but Jelly Mealing led the team with 20 and nailed four clutch free throws in the final moments to seal the three-point victory and keep the Knights within a game of first place in the league. Men's tennis traveled up to Gainesville but took the loss against Florida 6-1 this week. Eugene Dolgovic took the Knights' lone point against the Gators with a straight set victory in the number five position. The Knights then headed down to Miami to meet up with Clemson and it was a very tough battle, but the Tigers came out on top in the end 4-3. Blaze Schwartz, Tarek Ben Sultane and Mark Rockefeller all took home singles victories for the Knights who are now 3-3 three three on the season. Out in Arizona, the defending conference champion softball team began its season at the Kajikawa Classic on the campus of the defending national champs, Arizona State University. The Knights started the season on Friday with a huge game against Texas Tech. Unfortunately, it was the Red Raiders who came up with the 12-4 victory, despite two hits each from Abby McLean, Morgan Bullard, and newcomer Tiffany Lane. Later that day, the Knights came up just short in a slugfest against the host and second-ranked Sun Devils. Freshman Vanessa Perez had a big day going three for five with a home run and a pair of runs batted in. On day two, the Knights rebounded nicely as they took care of Oklahoma State eight to five. In back of two hits and two RBIs from Natalie Land, Morgan Paul got the win after throwing six and a third of solid ball. UCF had to settle for the split, however, as they fell to Western Michigan in the nightcap 10 to one. The Knights were supposed to finish up against Stanford on Sunday, but rain in the desert, of all things, forced a cancellation. Saturday was the final date of a four-game homestand for the women's basketball team as they took on SMU. Again, a very close game, but the Knights had the advantage inside with Emma Cannon, who pulled down 20 rebounds in addition to pouring in 14 points. Also, Chelsea Wiley racked up 26 points on 11 of 18 from the field. The Knights still trailed in the second half, but then picked up the defense, holding the Mustangs to under 38% from the field in the second. Emma Cannon closed things out late with a pair of putbacks off of missed free throws, and the Knights advanced to 8-2 in conference play with their first win ever over SMU, 78-68. UCF finishes the four-game homestand undefeated. How did they do it? Well, Chelsea Wiley will tell you. I believe it was a um, non-conference um, schedule that really toughened us up and got us more experience uh, to um, follow games through because we learned from other teams and um, big time teams. So I think uh, the non-conference schedule really um, helped us build. It. Men's basketball spent the weekend on the road at East Carolina and ran into a very hot shooting pirate team. 
But Jermaine Taylor had something to say about that. He finished with 24 points, keeping the Knights in it. UCF also got a career game from Kenrick Zondervan, who dropped 19 points on the Pirates. However, ECU shot an amazing 63% from the field for the game and hit 15 threes en route to an 89-75 victory. A good day for the track and field team at the Jimmy Carnes meet in Gainesville with eight top five finishes, half of them in the 3,000 meters, with Jamie Rispecki, Allison Palmer, Erica Weitz, and Ocean Cohen all finishing in the top five. Women's tennis was also out on the road. They picked up a huge win in Boca Raton against FAU 6-1, and it took a 12-10 tiebreaker for FAU to get its only point. The Knights got all their singles wins in straight sets and route to win number two on the season. UCF then followed that up with a trip down south to Miami. Unfortunately, though, it was the 13th ranked Hurricanes who got the win. Katie Orletsky scored the Knights' lone point with a straight set victory in singles. And for more information on all UCF sports, all you have to do is log on to www.ucfathletics.com. You are home for UCF sports 24-7. More to come here on UCF Sports Night. When we get back, our Sports Night Spotlight shines on National Signing Day in the football office here at UCF. We've got a behind-the-scenes look next. Fans join the men's basketball team on Valentine's Day this coming Saturday as they take on Tulsa. Tickets are on sale now by calling 407-UCF-1000 or visiting UCFAthletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. It's the day when months of hard work by the football staff finally come down to just a few hours, National Signing Day. And while you've probably already seen all of the press conferences and signing ceremonies for UCF's newest class of players, we wanted to show you what it was like in the football office the morning the faxes started to come in. Here now a behind the scenes look at National Signing Day in our Sports Night Spotlight. What's going on? What's going on, Marty? Not much. It's going to be a good day. Yeah. No question. Well, Coach O'Leary's already here. He was yeah. the first one here this morning. Yeah. He beat me by about five seconds, which is a little point of pride of his. I get to work about six and pretty much just make sure everything's set up with the fax machines and get ready for all that and make sure we have all the phone numbers of the mom, the dad, the the player, the girlfriend, everybody in case we have to get a hold of somebody and together I think it's a very solid class, a, a very good class that will help us in the future. Well as the faxes come in we'll put up each kid's name, their position, height, weight, what school they're from and as the day goes on it'll start filling up all the way and before I know it'll be full of names. How many total are you expecting? Um, right at 25. Okay. I mean, we're hoping we get all of them back. You hope no one changes their mind on the last day. Here comes one now. I think we'll have a couple early ones and then it'll be spread out. Well, difference in time zone too, you gotta watch. Go from there. Jonathan Davis. Where's Coach Kelly? All right, thank you so much. Hey, congratulations to you too. Nico Floyd. All this man. Yeah, baby! Oh, boy. Woo! <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> I know that means a lot to you, coach. <laughs> oh, I knew that meant a lot to you. Oh, that is a great surprise, Those sir. Those are two big ones, aren't they? I know. That is a great surprise. <laughs> you get ready to have a great four years, brother. But congratulations, man. Hey, tell your mom and dad to call me later, all right? All right, man. Yeah, put all the seven commits in that are here, because they're with that class. Mm -hmm. These are our mid-year guys. These are the guys that came in in January. That's really good. Had the kids sound the phone. Good, really good. Really, really relieved and happy it's over. And, uh, and see, the, the last ones are the hardest. Well, another year done. We're done, which is last one just came in. So, good job. Good work. When we return on UCF Sports Night, we sit down with head coach George O'Leary to talk about this year's recruiting class and the schedule for spring football. All that and more next. Fan softball season is underway and season tickets are on sale now for just $40. To see the defending Conference USA champions in action, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. Fans join the men's basketball team on Valentine's Day this coming Saturday as they take on Tulsa. Tickets are on sale now by calling 407-UCF-1000 or visiting ucfathletics.com. We're here on the set of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary talking about the recruiting class that just came in. And joining me now is the head coach himself. Coach O'Leary, how are you? Doing fine, Jeff. So Good. Thank you so much for coming by. Tell me about this, uh, the position needs that you wanted to fill with this recruiting class. Did you get the guys you feel you needed? Well, anytime the year before you look at what you have coming back and, and what's out there, and you, you go specifically by position, and you try to help each of the coaches out, each of the positions out, uh, as far as need fact is concerned and you know the class basically was really geared towards defensive backs defensive linemen and we went out and did a, a great job as far as bringing some in mid-year and also attaining some to come in next fall to help us so uh, I think that we handled all the positions that we need to handle and and hopefully they can all play and see what they can do next fall. You also got, a lot of the fans were pretty excited about the fact that there were a bunch of guys from the state of Florida, in particular right here in Central Florida that came in. Uh, did it just work out that way for you guys? No, we've always recruited the state of Florida and uh, you know we just don't recruit some of the schools, some of our, our fan base wants to look at it. It all based on the need factor and I think this year we uh, there was a need factor, there was players to, that we had to look at in the Central Florida area and we were very successful and I think the coaches did a great job of, of bringing uh, players in that could help the program and uh, I think you know filled our needs as far as any voids we had with uh, Florida athletes. We, I think we had 16 of the 24 from the state of Florida. Looking back at the actual day on Wednesday and that whole morning with you guys coming in so early, is that what it's really like? I mean it's, it seems like uh, on occasion it's hours of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. Well, it really is because you, you work, you know, actually you're recruiting a lot of these players for two or three years out and it comes down to one decision uh, and, and hopefully that there aren't any changes overnight or that type of thing and you're awaiting the, the faxes and by NCA rule you, you can't, uh, they can't come in until after seven or you can't have them signed until that time. So 
Uh, again, it's uh, they all stayed the way they should have stayed, but I've been both ends of that, where you're waiting on some, they're not coming in, so you have all the phone calls and phone numbers you need to call, and, and you make sure where are they, what's wrong, and that type of thing. But I think it's a great day for the assistant coaches and, and just a culmination of, of putting it all together. Here we are in mid-February. Spring football is already right around the corner. So you're getting pretty excited about that? Well, we really are, but we just left this morning on our junior recruiting day coming up on uh, February 28th where we bring the top juniors in the area. But uh, again, recruiting doesn't stop. And uh, you know, I think we start spring football April, uh, March 19th and we end April 11th. So we're looking forward to it. Right after St. Patrick's Day. Head coach George O'Leary, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. All right, stick around. Coming up next, we'll have a look at our top three plays of the week and plenty more when we return. Fans, baseball season is right around the corner, and season tickets are on sale now, starting at just $99. To order, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. Fans, join the men's basketball team on Valentine's Day this coming Saturday as they take on Tulsa. Tickets are on sale now by calling 407-UCF-1000 or visiting ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We'll get to our plays of the week in a moment, but first, here's a look at some news and notes from the week in UCF Sports. UCF players swept the weekly Women's Basketball Conference Awards this week. First, Chelsea Wiley was named CUSA Player of the Week after averaging 26 points per game in two games against East Carolina and Marshall. Wiley's best performance came against the Thundering Herd when she tallied 30 points on 11 of 18 from the field, including 7 of 9 from three-point range, upping her season percentage to 50.6, good enough for third best in the nation. It's the second time Chelsea's won the Conference Player of the Week award this season, and the third time a UCF player has won it, and McKinnon won it back on January 12th. Also, Asia Patrick took home honors as the conference's Rookie of the Week. The Rockwood, Florida native averaged 15 points, 8.5 assists, and 5 rebounds against ECU and Marshall. Her best game was against the Pirates when she finished just two rebounds shy of a triple-double with 16 points, 13 assists, and 8 boards. It's the first time Asia has won a weekly conference award. She's currently in the top five among Conference USA freshmen in eight different categories and is the top scoring freshman in the league in conference games. And baseball practice is underway at UCF. Head coach Terry Rooney heads into his first year amid great excitement with 13 seniors heading up his squad. The Knights open the season at home on February 20th with a four game series against Virginia Commonwealth and have home games against USF, Florida, Jacksonville, UNF, Stetson, and FIU, among plenty others. Time now for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three, men's hoops against East Carolina. And you want to see the definition of stick to -itiveness. Check out Kenny Zondervan fighting and scraping and getting the bucket and the foul. Check it out again as Big Z comes up big, keeping the Knights in it against the Pirates. Play number two, women's hoops came up big against Tulsa late. Sparked by Angelica Mealing who hit this tough runner to put the Knights up for good. Take a look at the remix as Jelly helps the Knights roll to their seventh win in conference this year. But play number one also belongs to Jelly against SMU as here late in the game she gets the steal, gives it up, gets it right back, scores the layup and one, helping the Knights to an eight and two record in the conference. And those are your plays of the week. Lots of events on campus as we look at the week ahead. The softball team kicks things off with their home opener, a doubleheader against UNF. First game on Wednesday is at 3 p.m. and you can watch online at ucfathletics.com. Meanwhile, that evening, the men's basketball team tips off out in El Paso, Texas against UTEP. Game time is at 9.05 Eastern and you can listen on AM740 WQTM or online at ucfathletics.com. Friday starts with women's tennis as the Knights take on Georgia Southern at the tennis complex. The match begins at 2 p.m. 
Then softball takes the field on the first day of the UCF Early Bird Tournament. The Knights face off with Villanova at 3.30 and Texas Arlington at 5.30. And both games are live on UCFathletics.com. Elsewhere on the road, the women's basketball team faces Marshall in West Virginia. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. and that game can be heard on UCFathletics.com. Also, the track and field team has split dates this weekend. Half the team travels to Arkansas for the Tyson Invitational Friday and Saturday, and the other half will be in Chapel Hill, North Carolina for the UNC Invitational on Saturday only. Back on campus, the early bird tournament continues on Valentine's Day at 11 a.m. at the softball complex as the Knights take on George Mason, followed by a big matchup with Tennessee at 3.30 p.m. You can also catch those games on UCFathletics.com. Later that night, the men's basketball team takes on Tulsa at 7 p.m. That game can be seen on UCFathletics.com as well. Two other teams are on the road on Valentine's Day. The men's tennis team faces Samford in Auburn, Alabama at 1 p.m. And the men's golf team opens its spring season in Gainesville at the Gator Invitational, which goes through Sunday. The weekend finishes up with women's tennis at home facing Florida Gulf Coast at the tennis complex. Action begins at 1 p.m. on campus. Meanwhile, the men's tennis team takes on Auburn at 11 a.m. up in Alabama. And a busy week finishes with women's basketball on the road at East Carolina. Tip-off is at 2 up in Greenville, and you can listen online at UCFathletics.com. On Monday, check out the Kirk Spira radio show live from Smoky Bones in Waterford Lakes. Join Coach Spira and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they talk UCF hoops every Monday at 6 p.m. on AM 740 WQTM. Then on Tuesday, join Coach and Mark for UCF Sports Today with Kirk Spira as we take a look back at the week in UCF hoops with plenty of highlights and features. The show debuts on Sun Sports at 4 p.m. and can also be seen Wednesdays and Fridays on Bright House Sports Network and all week on UCF TV. And of course, you can check out UCF Sports Night on Sun Sports preceding UCF Sports Today, Tuesdays at 3.30. And you can also see our show Tuesday and Thursday on Bright House Sports Network and all week on UCF TV. And for all the latest on all UCF sports, visit UCFathletics.com, your home for UCF sports, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And of course, if you want to catch this episode one more time or any of our archived episodes of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv, click on Original Programming, and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by... Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.